Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 21 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. In the previous videos, I told you we were discussing the fundamental concepts of organic reaction mechanism and I told you about the organic reaction mechanism, how a reaction takes place. In an organic reaction, you have a substrate and you have an attacking reagent. They react with each other and they result in the formation of an intermediate. Then the intermediate further reacts to give you the products. That is what we understood in part 19, I guess. And then in part 20, I told you about the cleavage of a covalent bond. That is when the reactants get converted into the intermediate, the first step that takes place is breaking of old bonds and then formation of new bonds takes place. So the breaking of old bonds, since or organic compounds are usually covalent compounds, therefore, and since all bonds of carbon are usually covalent, therefore we talk of the cleavage of the carbon, uh, of the bonds of carbon with other atoms, other carbons or other atoms. And this cleavage may be homolytic, it may be heterolytic. So uh, if you do not understand what I'm telling you, I would encourage you to watch the previous video. In this video, we are going to now talk of the next fundamental concept that is what is a nucleophile and what's an electrophile. Technically, the substrate and the, um, and the attacking reagent. If the reaction is polar, that is if the cleavage that took place was heterolytic and the reaction is polar in nature, in that case, one of them would be a nucleophile and the other one would be a, an electrophile. The nucleophile and electrophile are kind of charged uh, particles or they may have apparent charge that is positive and negative. They are more or less like polar, uh, we would not call them ionic reactions as such, but polar reactions. They may involve ions, but they may just have imaginary or apparent uh, positive and negative centers. So let us understand what a nucleophile is. As the name suggests, Nucleo stands for nucleus and phyle means loving. So a species that loves the nucleus, the nucleus of an atom is positive in nature. Therefore a nucleophile, who would love positive charge? A negative charge would love positive charge, right? So a nucleophile would be a reagent which has, which brings an electron pair. It is rich in electrons and that is why it is attracted towards the positive charge or towards the nucleus. So a species that is negatively charged or a species that has extra electrons or uh, if it has extra electrons, it would be negatively charged, but which has electrons which could be donated even if it is neutral, like lone pairs of electrons, that would also act as a nucleophile. So let us see the definition. A reagent that brings an electron pair, it brings a pair of electrons, that would be a, known as a nucleophile. So usually when we uh, represent nucleophile, we write it as NU and a double dot. The double dot represents the uh, electrons. It is rich in electrons, it can donate a pair of electrons and therefore it is known as the nucleophile. And NU stands for Nucleo or the nucleo stands for the nucleus and phyle is loving or seeking. It goes looking for the nucleus and the nucleus in other words is positive charge. On the other hand, an electrophile would be a reagent that takes away an electron pair. It would be the opposite of nucleophile. An electro, it is attracted to the electron, it is attracted to the negative charge. File is loving, it is seeking negative charge. So who would seek negative charge? Something that itself is positive. So an electrophile is a positive species that gets attracted to a nucleophile. So in a polar reaction, if one of them is, an, is the substrate and the other is the reagent, you actually, the reaction would be between the nucleophile and the electrophile. A polar reaction is actually a reaction between the nucleophile and the electrophile. One of them is the substrate and the other is the, uh, is the reagent. But when we define them, we take both of them as reagents. Assuming that one of them, the, the reagent is the attacking agent. So we, although we um, define it as reagents, but in a reaction, one of these has to be a substrate and the other one is the, uh, is the uh, what, reagent. 
During a polar organic reaction, a nucleophile attacks an electrophilic center. We said a reagent is something that the attacking reagent, it attacks the substrate. So if the nucleophile attacks the electrophilic center, then who is the attacking reagent? We are assuming here that the nucleophile is the attacking agent and or the attacking reagent and the electrophile is the substrate. So it attacks the electrophilic center of the substrate. That is the organic compound whose reaction we are carrying out that is the atom who will be this if the substrate is electrophilic if the substrate is electrophilic it means that substrate that point or, or that center of the substrate is positively charged and that is why the nucleophile is attracted to that positive charge and since the nucleophile has electrons to give that positive charge attracts the negative charge of the nucleophile or those electrons. So during a polar organic reaction a nucleophile attacks an electrophilic center of the substrate that is the atom that is electron deficient. Who will be electrophilic? Electrophilic would be one who does not have electrons that is why it is going and seeking electrons which is positively charged. So either the whole species is positively charged, which does not happen. It is one atom. That atom which has the, which bears the positive charge is known as the electrophilic center of that compound. Similarly, that atom which bears, which has those electrons to give out or it has the negative charge, that is known as the nucleophilic center. So that is the atom that is electron deficient. Similarly, the electrophile attacks an electron deficient center of the substrate. When the electrophile is the attacking reagent, then the substrate is nucleophilic. And if the attacking agent is nucleophilic, then the substrate is electrophilic. So basically, a polar reaction is nothing but a reaction between a nucleophile and an electrophile. Let me just correct this here. I've written uh, electron similarly electrophile attacks an electron deficient uh, center an electrophile would never attack an electron deficient center it would attack an electron rich center so this word here is wrong so uh, I'll just re-explain this that during a polar organic reaction a nucleophile attacks an electrophilic center nucleophile obviously will attack the electrophilic because nucleophile is negatively charged and it would attack a positively charged electrophilic center similarly if the electrophile which is uh, positively charged would attack an electron rich center because uh, it is electrophile it is electron loving so it needs that center which has more of electrons so this would not be deficient this should be electron rich center of the substrate so electron rich center of the substrate okay if you really see a polar reaction is nothing but the reaction between an electrophile and a nucleophile either one of these can be the substrate and the other one becomes the attacking agent if the attacking agent is a nucleophile then we call it a nucleophilic substitution or a nucleophilic addition if the attacking agent is an electrophile we call it an electrophilic reaction we just name the reaction not according to the substrate but according to the attacking reagent now how do we represent this how do we show the nucleophile has electrons and they are transferred to the electrophile and this is shown by a curved arrow which goes which shows that the electrons are moving from the nucleophile to the electrophile which is positively charged so it is the movement of electrons is represented with the help of a curved arrow i have not made it very curved because i did not want to cover the uh, word here but it has to be curved and the electrons should move from the atom which is uh, which is the nucleophile towards the atom in the electrophile where or the electrophilic center of the electrophile thus the electrophiles they receive the electron irrespective of who is the substrate or who is the uh, attacking agent it is always the electrophile who receives the electrons from the nucleophile because it is only the movement of electrons which takes place so thus the electrophile receives the electron pair from the nucleophile 
and when the two undergo bonding interaction where either one can be the substrate or the attacking agent. How do we represent it? With the help of a curved arrow. The representation of the movement of electrons is done with the help of a curved arrow which indicates the movement of electrons. Let's take some examples of nucleophile. Who would be a nucleophile? Who would be attracted to positive charge? Anything that is negatively charged. So all negatively charged ions or species in the, in the organic molecules, they would be nucleophilic in uh, nature. So examples of nucleophiles, OH negative, CN negative, R3C negative, which is the uh, carbon ion. So carbon ion, the cyanide group, the alcoholic group, OH negative, or, uh, or we should say the hydroxyl group, not the alcoholic group. OH negative, the hydroxyl ion, they would all act as nucleophiles. If there are neutral molecules, do neutral molecules not act as nucleophiles? They do. And when do they? I, you remember in the beginning when I told you that either they are charged or they have apparent charge. That is, they have lone pairs of electrons on atoms and these lone pairs can be uh, given to form a bond. So, such compounds or such molecules which have lone pairs of electrons on certain atoms can also act as nucleophiles because these electrons would be the electrophilic center. So, uh, so the electrons for example are 3N, H2O water molecule, R2NH, all these are examples of at molecules where you have atoms which have lone pairs of electrons. Nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons, oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons, nitrogen again has a lone pair of electrons. So all those species which have lone pairs of electrons on certain atoms can also act as nucleophilic uh, molecules. Examples of electrophiles. Electrophiles are exactly the opposite of nucleophiles. So in an electrophile, who would be attracted to negative charge? Anything that is positively charged. So all positively charged ions would be electrophilic in nature. Since we are talking of organic chemistry and not the um, mineral acids or anything, so or inorganic uh, ions, in organic chemistry mainly the positively charged ion would be the carbocation. So carbocations have a positive charge on them, therefore they act as electrophilic centers. The carbon acts as the electrophilic center. Just as we had here in the nucleophiles, the molecules having lone pairs of electrons, they supply the electrons and therefore they are nucleophilic. Similarly, neutral molecules in the case where there is a chance of adding electrons or neutral molecules which are somehow deficient in electrons due to the presence of a sextet of electrons, the octet is not completed or there is a double bond or there is a polarity in the uh, possible in the uh, molecule. Such molecules would also act as electrophiles. Let's take this example and understand this better. Neutral molecules which have functional groups like the carbonyl group in carbonyl group C, carbon is attached to oxygen. Oxygen is highly electronegative. So what happens? Oxygen attracts these electrons towards itself, thereby making this carbon slightly positively charged. And anything that is positively charged would be electrophilic. It's not a complete positive charge. It's only a partial positive charge. Yet there is a possibility of it acting as a nucleophile. Uh, as an electrophile. Another thing is that there is a double bond here. So the second bond is weaker. So it is possible for that second bond to break and therefore uh, it can attract more electrons to result in the formation of single bonds. So that also makes it kind of electron attracting and therefore it acts as the electrophile. Alkyl halides Halogen atoms again are electronegative in nature and since the halogens like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, they are far more electronegative in comparison to carbon, the molecule would be polar in nature. The halogen would acquire a partial negative charge while the carbon adjacent which is attached to it would acquire a partial positive charge. Now since it has an apparent positive charge, it acts as an electrophile. Right? So carbocation has a sextet configuration. It does not have eight electrons. The octet is not completed. It has a sextet of electrons and that is why it is electrophilic. It needs electrons in order to complete the octet and acts as an electrophile. 
it is electron deficient and it receives electrons from the nucleophile. In neutral molecules like Rx, that is hel the alkyl halides, in these the, there is a polarity between carbon and the halogen. The CX bond has a polarity due to which the halogen becomes partially negatively charged while the carbon is partially positively charged. And anything that is positive, the positively charged center would act as the electrophile. So this was the definition of uh, or of nucleophiles and electrophiles. In the next video, we'll be doing these salt examples, the salt problems, just to clarify whatever we've done till now um, and for you to understand it better. But with this, I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.